first, I'm going to get into the current state's go state analytics, social engineering engagements, um, and, and, then, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. But uh, I also want to let, let you guys know that these are my insights. You guys might not feel the same way about everything I say. Hey, all right, nice. um, and, and so this is just what I've looked at. Okay, so when I think about OSINT, I think that uh, I want high quality, reliable data that I'm collecting on my target. And the collection process usually ends up being manual because when you, when you see a successful spear phishing attack, uh, there's almost always the manual person going on. Uh, it can be for a few reasons. A couple it might be that you want to verify that the information that you're getting is, is accurate. Also, so that you can tailor your attack uh, to your target uh, as you learn more about them. But all of it is so that you have a higher chance of conversion uh, when, you, when you execute the attack. So uh, aside from some minor variations, this process is extremely repetitive. Uh, once you've gone through the OSINT phase on a couple of targets, uh, you kind of have down your process, maybe you have a couple of targets from each industry, you kind of, um, you know, you get down what you're gonna be doing. So you think, okay, why can't, why can't this be automated? And sometimes you can automate things, uh, but once the, the automation uh, starts turning into the heavy lifting, a lot of the times you'll see big sites start to change their template, and they just uh, coincidentally a lot of that data just destroys the most popular, you know, scraping tool. Uh, so, so that would be uh, why uh, when, when we see automation work, it's, it, it doesn't last very long. So, here, here's the current state of analytics. And, and, sorry, I had some answers on this last time. So why do these sites care so much about protecting their publicly available data? It's because analytics. As a side note, how many use big data and analytics interchangeably for the purposes of this time? So, regardless of what the company does or what they say they do, if you look at companies with the biggest online presence, Amazon, Google, Facebook, that type of thing, uh, if, if you were to take away their analytics, in my opinion, they would not last very long. You, you might not all agree, but I believe that uh, when you're a company that big, you can't act on intuition alone. Uh, so, not only is every major decision driven by analytics, even the smallest decisions are driven by data as well. An example would be the way that Facebook has uh, is split testing thousands of different versions of their website at any one time uh, and, and pushing only the highest performing features uh, to the public version of the site. Uh, but not only do these big companies live off analytics, but sometimes it's the way the companies are born. Uh, this is a quote by, by Jeff Bezos in 1997. I'm not going to read it in the Jeff Bezos voice from the video we've seen. Uh, he says, three years ago, I was working at a quantitative hedge fund when I came across the startling statistic. So that statistic uh, stated just how rapidly consumers were moving online. It's also what caused Jeff to leave the company he was at to start Amazon. And it's now why we're impatient uh, when we can't get things delivered the same day. Uh, so you're sold, right? You're going to go out, you're going to study the blade, you're going to study the data, and, and start the next Amazon, right? Well, as I look around the room, I'm not so convinced. <laughs> because for, fortunately, for those of you who take Jeff's quote to heart, the data is already out there, and it can be used for things other than starting or growing businesses, like destroying it, like social engineering. So, I'm a fan of Amazon, by the way, I don't need my account shit now. It's all educational purposes. So, for those of you who conduct social engineering engagements legally, you may resonate with this chart. The client doesn't even get to choose two, they get to choose one. Effective, quick, or inexpensive. In this current state, I'm generalizing a little bit, but uh, the companies with big budgets are the only ones getting social engineering pen testing. And I, I believe that needs to change when it comes to more. Uh, so Fortune 5,000 companies are already being targeted in mass. I believe that smaller businesses in certain industries are going to quickly become uh, the next big focus for social engineering attacks based on the data that they hold and the lack of uh, security awareness. So I'm I needed to include some, somewhere here. So I think I've depressed everyone enough with that last part, so what can we do about this? So Dragnet is this social engineering framework that I'm going to get into now. We'll watch them in a little bit. Uh, but uh, I believe that Dragnet is, is going to be a popular solution for pen testers. I'm committed to continually improving on it as long as the demand is there. What I said about uh, post and autom automation uh, being fleeting, for every star on the GitHub, that's going to be an hour of me you know, going back and re-improving. So free labor, basically. I mean, it's, it's a cheap, it's cheap labor for you guys. So uh, I would recommend starting this project if you like it. Maybe you know the OSINT stops working. Start the project, and that's an 
shower, I'm just gonna be sitting in, in mom's basement. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, where was I here? So, I'm gonna quickly cover the framework's OSINT automation and machine learning capabilities, and then we're gonna check out a quick demo. And I'm also happy to see, say that uh, Dragnet is, um, and will continue to be open source. So, I believe that this target template correlation with machine learning thing.
client we decided to take on. So we're going to choose from the existing companies. We're going to choose the type of, of test that we're running. This one's fishing and fishing. And we're going to choose a start and end date. Okay, so these three uh, contacts are, are essentially targets that we've already uploaded for PyFactor. They've already, we've already run uh, an engagement against them. But I'm going to drag in a new file with some new targets. The target list is populated, and now I can choose who I want to include, and um, you know, and also choose which uh, type of test they're going to be involved in. So the oil is only going to be uh, fishing. We're going to get rid. I'm, I'm scared of Jared, so we're going to get rid of him completely. Uh, he's just too easy. Uh, uh, big head, so we're get rid of and then we're going to run uh, just the fishing on a couple of other uh, targets here. And I think, yeah, there we go. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to say, you know, this begins. So, as you can see on the right, uh, this says attack ready. That's how fast. That's how fast, essentially, that the OSINT is, is being done. And uh, because the model is already trained and will be retrained each time someone uh, converts or, or we get one of those labels that you saw from the, from the um, equation slide, uh, the model is going to be retrained. Once that happens, to create the prediction is going to be extremely quick. So we can see we have things like starting and all prediction. This last update column on the right is going to show what the last thing to happen was. But we, we also see that we have an action required in addition to the attack rate. The action required is on Jin Yang. Interesting. Okay, click the button. This is pre recorded. They started, they wanted us to pre record these, so, which is probably a good thing. Okay, so which of these is Jin Yang? This is what I was talking about, where hands near the wheel, and I have to pick which one is my target. I just happen to know that this is a Male, maybe maybe I've seen the target, maybe I know roughly what age he is, I can call the client, maybe I'm trying to get that data. So I choose to use the target, it, it started OSINT, it completed OSINT, uh, because I'm, I have an integration like clear bit for uh, full contact, and that's why the OSINT is going to be faster. Okay, so now I just launched, you can see some people say email scheduled, some people say sending email. This is based on the, oh, what's this? So I'm going to explain a little bit more. Uh, but it looks like we have a notification that Jin Yang already opened our email, but we'd like to fish him now. So uh, this is because it's a links template that wants you to call and follow up as soon as uh, the target opens the email. Not all of these uh, templates need to be linked. On the right, you can see a mini dossier area. This is going to be uh, that check mark indicates that it's confirmed, the data is confirmed. The fingerprint indicates that this was uh, using those that we found this. Things like education history, background info, work history. And so we see an attack log that shows the email was sent and opened and at what time. We have our script right here that we're going to be using with his name uh, included. And we can place the call whenever we're ready. And it should be both of these happen. So if we click, you can see that this, 
came out here. Basically, we're going to be able to see the landing page that she was sent to. It is not LinkedIn, it is LinkedIn. So this is the landing page and where she fell for the uh, credentials capture attack. So we can click on her little avatar there and see the full dossier. It's essentially just a, uh, a more spread out version of the main dossier that you saw. And also, one cool thing is that this in the target industry section is not just about the attack. It's, it's uh, all attacks, and it's also things like when she was added to a certain company, when it was started, it was completed, when templates were suggested, that type of thing. So I believe that is it. Yep. Cool. Okay, so that's the demo. And What's next? Uh, things like Reamers, voice mode drops. Uh, you know, once we get the inbound calling set up, uh, you'll be able to do things like this earlier in the morning. Maybe when someone is not going to be around the phone and uh, try to get them to call, call you back. Things like uh, really focusing on individual targeting so that you don't have to do things through a company, again, for educational purposes. Uh, distributed vision, so you might be able to have a team set up and, and be able to get them um, uh, set up with multiple attack modes, that type of thing. Native mobile, I think, would be really cool uh, to be able to have an app to, to manage this and to be able to um, do, do all the calls through an app. I think it would be really cool. And your request here is the bottom one. So I, I, I uh, really am committed to working on this. Uh, I, I'm not going to be the guy that's like, oh, submit a cool request. Like, I'll do the work. You guys, if there are enough people that want something, they can plus one it if someone else suggests it, su suggests it on, uh, on GitHub. So I, I really appreciate it if you guys give your ideas there. We have to get this. Hey, it's me, Cameron Salmon. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or learned something. Comment below if you want me to continue making these types of videos.